and akarma and uh, karma the same both are in action you said yeah so the meaning uh, see karmanya karma yah pashyet pashyet means one who sees one who would see mm. that sees in action when there is a lot of action going on in the state of action when one sees in action that is what is the meaning of that statement karmani akarma yah pashyet okay and uh, akarmani cha karma yah is the opposite of that vice versa right so one who sees action in in action that's the that's the if or the when are describing the person that person is called krishna karma krit he is using a technical word there krishna karma krit so one who has done all act all karmas one who has completed all duties to get that all actions that are to be done is done one who can say i have nothing more to do i have nothing to do period that person is called a krishna karma krit okay Okay. Krishna means complete. Karma means action, and Krit one who has done, one who has done everything that is to be done. Okay, that doesn't mean I am retired. I have completed all my duties. I have married away all my children, and so now I have nothing. There are no duties, etc. Not that kind of Krishna karma. Here, here, because Kartrithu is not there. There is no doership at all, and therefore. Even though Krishna is still busy, very busy, Krishna has been an ambassador, etc. He has been very, very busy. He is now driving Arjuna's chariot, and he is busy. He has a lot of responsibilities. <coughs> still, Krishna says, "No, I don't do anything. I don't do anything." That is Krishna karma krit. One who has done everything that is to be done. That is a technical word that is used in our shastra. That's why Krishna. There is a, there is a, there is a beautiful story. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm not getting it now. I'll tell it in the next class. It's about Krishna. <clears throat> okay. So does that help? Uh, so that, we'll understand that concept further. as we discuss this shloka and next few shlokas so is that basically one who does not have need for doership is that how we can understand it who does not need to have doership say have need so kartritvam is there okay we'll talk about it in the next class so need for doership That's an interesting question. Person does not have any need for worship, so no, that is not what is being said here. The nature of Atma is understood, and therefore there is nothing more to be done. Means there is nothing. What are the four things, four purusharthas for a, of a human being? Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Anything we do will come in one or more of these categories. Correct? Such a thing is not there for the person. Moksha is there. Kartrutam, akartrutam is understood. That means moksha. Therefore, there is no more purushartha to gain, and therefore nothing to be done. Correct? Nothing to be done. Whatever is to be done has been done. There is there is also one way to look at this. Nothing to gain. No more purushartha yet. So, for the sake of this or that, I can become. For my sake, I do this. That idea is not there. Isn't that the same as no need for doership then? Because there is nothing no to be gained. No. So therefore, does Krishna have doership or not? No. Okay. Does Krishna have doership or not? No. What did we say? What did we say? When I understand the nature, see. when the lamp shade understands that i am clay then the the nature of clay is understood the imperishable all 
pervasive, ever existing clay that I am is understood. Correct? When that understanding happens, the lampshade exists or goes away, disappears. It exists. It exists. Mithya continues to exist. Mithya continues to exist. Kartrutam will continue to exist. But then what? But what? Kartrutam is Mithya. Even to say, even for Krishna to respond, for when you call, hey, Mr. Krishna, how are you? There must be, that Ahankara must be there or not. Identity must be there or not. Yeah, we'll discuss this but, more in the next part. But also with an understanding that it's Mithya, right? Complete understanding that it's Mithya. It's like the body. Body is there. Body is Mithya. Ahankara is like the body. Ahankara also is Mithya. Correct. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. go ahead, him. Yeah, uh, Jayakumar ji, you, uh, today in the class you said that Ahankara is also a thought. So when you say thought, what exactly do you mean by a thought? What is the nature of thought? <clears throat> yeah. Thought. So if I show this to you, you have a thought in your mind. So, thought of a book. And if I show you this, you have a thought. Thought of spectacles. All these are thoughts. All these are thoughts. Who are you if I say? Everything you say about you, is it a thought or not? Yeah. Is it a collection of thoughts or not? Right. right. It's a collection of thoughts. Right. And and so that identity, finally that identity which says, I am so-and-so, okay, is that a thought or not? Hmm. Yeah. You have to yes. think about it. I mean, it's not a, we have never thought like this before, so we have to spend some time on this. It is a thought. Hmm. It is a thought. My sense of I, my sense of existence, my sense of who I am, my idea of who I am, everything is but a thought or a series of thoughts or a collection of thoughts. But it all centers on that I, that I thought, that I thought is what sustains all this. Karma is done by that I, ego. And the karma phalam is also for that same ego. Last time we mentioned this, hmm. right? So that is why I said ego is also a thought. A thought. And when I wake up, ego is not there in deep sleep. Deep sleep, there is no ego. Okay? There is no ahankara. There is no kartritva. There is no karta. Karta goes away. Because vitya, it can go and it can come. And it comes. The first thing that comes when, one, when we wake up is I thought. Before all other thoughts, the I thought comes. The identity comes. You might wake up and say, oh, the clock, you saw the clock thought has come. You may say here, hey, Bhagavan Sri Krishna thought has come. All this has come, but first what comes? I thought. Without telling, without making it explicit, it has already come. Mm -hmm. Correct? So that's the, uh, we say, we can use the primordial of all thoughts. Without I thought, there is no other ownership will not take place. And therefore, yeah, I woke up. Yeah, I recognize who I am. I don't say that, but yeah. it's obvious I recognize who yeah. I am. So the trouble comes because yeah, go ahead. I mean, as a I, I cannot recognize the I. Like in the sense that when I say I want to recognize Ahankara, it's the Ahankara itself saying that it wants to recognize itself. So it's, it becomes... Um, Yeah, it's not, it's not like self-referential, you're saying. Ha, uh -huh, yeah, exactly. It's self-referential. So how can the ego recognize the ego? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's a collection of thoughts. That's why it's a collection of thoughts. Right. It's like saying I'm sad. How do you know you're sad? So I see some thoughts which are unpleasant and I call it a sadness. Okay. Yeah. And so like that. The, the collection of thoughts about the I is also there. There are all thoughts. And we are witness to our thoughts. And so, 
And so that collection of thoughts gives what is called an identity to myself. And that identity is the, is the karta, is the ego. So, but you're talking about how can I know myself, the real nature of myself? There that argument is valid. How can I know my real self? Fortunately, because the ego is a thought, you can know everything about that who you are. Because we are talking about what you have accomplished, who you are fundamentally, not fundamentally, who you are as a person who is who is born on so-and-so date at so-and-so time and so-and-so place and so-and-so house. That person is well known. Correct? It's all a series of thoughts. Okay. And it's centered on that. And that collection of thoughts makes me who I am. And that I is the Ahankar. Yeah. So it's not as self-referential as the reference to Atma itself. Think about it. Yeah, Mahesh, go ahead. In the sloka, we said uh, that uh, I, uh, those who see uh, no action in action because it is Atma has no action. Right? Am I correct? That's that was our understanding. Like uh, that's what I the way I understood. So if that is so, then how can I see no uh, action in actionless because I, Atma itself is not action. Right. <clears throat> so there, there you have to think about when somebody says I don't do anything. When mm -hmm. somebody says, "What are you doing, Mahesh? We had a long weekend coming up." No, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to do anything. Then I call you the next day. What did you do? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything means what? Is that to be taken literally? No. Ah, that is what is the meaning of akarmani karma yapashi. That is the meaning. When somebody says I didn't do anything, then you know that is not a true statement. That is that is the meaning of no. We don't bring atma into that discussion. Ah, that is what my question was. Okay. So that, okay. Correct. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Girish. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when we say I don't even own the body, so where this who is this I then? Uh, okay, repeat the question again. I don't even own the body. So who is this I there again? Well, so that I is the karta, is the ahankara. Yeah. Ahankara is smart enough to figure out that this is my body. Yeah, okay. It's a my body. Okay. What is your name? My name is. So my name is. So all this ahankara is very clear about. So uh, the ahankara can be made to think. Now think, is this is this body? Can you think of your body as not my body? Can we think? We have a mind which can think. And so that same karta only, the same ahankara, who is a karta only, makes that statement. No different to no another entity there. We don't need to bring in another entity. It's all the same entity. Who is studying Vedanta? I am studying Veda, correct? <laughs> so who is that I? I is very <laughs> Atma is studying Vedanta? Identity. No. Atma is studying Vedanta? No. Yeah. So, same Kattam, same Ahankara, correct? <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, Vijay, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, so Guruji, when we talk about an enlightened or a wise person, he also has that um, ahankara to the extent that he has to conduct his life, right? Uh, that identity is there. But what are, what is it that, um, how does he, other than doership, okay, he doesn't have doership in whatever that he's doing. That's understood. But what are the other thoughts of... Um, 
uh, ego or ahankara that he has how does he distinguish himself from the others all right so what happens to the what are the thought processes surrounding yeah this uh, this uh, this wise person who has understood all these facts about atma yes what about that person's thought process correct that is the yes. question yes 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 so first point to remember here is the person vanishes this ideas we should give up you know the person disappears because atma is now the whole and the jiva is merged into the paramatma right we have seen all these visions of jiva merging into paramatma so this wise person has merged into paramatma then what paramatma is all pervasive so he's become all pervasive means he's become vaporized and then he's gone so these ideas we need to let go correct so the body is very much there for a wise person that's why we have you have the word jivan mukta otherwise we will not have the word jivan mukta at all we only have a videha mukta videha mukta means a person who is free after death videha mukta why why should we have the word jivan mukta so jivan mukta means person is alive and still a mukta okay body is there what about the mind Now you agree that body is there. Wise person will have a body also. What about a mind? Mind yes. will be there or not there? Yes, he will have. Mind will be there. Okay, so mind will be there. Why mind should be there for a wise person? He he also gets thoughts, right? I guess. Right. so he or she also gets thoughts correct and uh, but why should he get thoughts <laughs> because why is no are khatam ho gaya everything is gone job is over job done why should he get thoughts no he has to still do whatever needs to be done though he might be a krishna karta uh, that word but still he has to still do things right whatever uh, to conduct his life and uh, i guess so i don't know correct so he is he is still he is still surviving the body is still surviving body is not disappeared therefore mind is not going to disappear nothing is going to disappear the person will be exactly like before hmm. except that this ajnanam is gone the ignorance of the self is gone ignorance is knowing something knowing a fact is a removal of ignorance so now the person now knows clearly what's what okay like the sun person knows the sun doesn't rotate really speaking doesn't revolve around the earth very clear crystal clear knowledge is there and yet this movement of the sun is perceived even the wise person will perceive movement of the sun and no 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 chance he is not spared he is not special that for him perceptions along will be different no because the drishti is there but the drishti is there yeah even though the sun is revolving the sun really is stationary and so atma is akarta is known very well atma is satyam is known very well then what about all the thoughts what about the mind back to your question yeah thoughts will come and go thoughts will come and go a talk is over suddenly hunger experience of hunger will be there or not for the wise person will be there because the, the, he the, the wise the, the wisdom cannot change the way the stomach functions cannot change the way the body functions cannot change the way the mind functions also think about it a fact is understood mind continues to throw thoughts and one of the thoughts is hunger thought now the person has to respond to that and responds so life goes on for that person also but krishna karma krit no longer i am insecure i am a victim of this or that i this this i i am a victim idea goes away completely completely what about the body your body is going to you know you going to die some day body will die some day i know that so so what i am avinashi i am 
Sarva Gataha also. I am all pervasive also. My God is too bold. Because if all clay is the world of clay, then it's just one world of clay. Correct? Mm -hmm. And so Atma is just one. All pervasive Atma. So that person is unshakable. Nobody can shake that person. Because attitude is one thing. You can shake a person. Belief can be shaken. However strong a belief is, the belief can be shaken. But knowledge, nahi, jnana, nahi, jnanam, pavitram, iha vidyate, jnana sadrisham. So, that knowledge the person has. Therefore, back to your question, what happens to the thoughts of the wise person? We say, thoughts will come and go. There is no pressure to eliminate thoughts. Keep that, that is, I have to mention this. Because there is another whole world that is trying to eliminate thoughts and getting stressed out. Because, why stressed out? Because thoughts cannot be eliminated. How much joy there is in understanding that? So much freedom is there. Even in just knowing that itself, there is so much freedom. Forget Vedanta. Correct? And so, so uh, Guruji, so at the back of, uh, meaning uh, not back of the mind, but constantly they know everything is temporary. Nothing is permanent. And probably that gives that sense of uh, detachment in whatever attachment they have also, if at all they have. That is, yeah, so that, that is karma yoga. That is for people before knowledge itself, we must have that. Before even Everything is this. temporary idea, we should be there even before. Now itself, we all should have all that. And uh, that, 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 the next... Yeah, the is second is temporary. Yeah, okay. temporary. Huh? No, I'm that's like second nature means that's uh, yes yes yeah yeah so that 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 is second nature that is second nature because mithyatvam is understood everything is like this lampshade the pot and pots will come and go but clay always remains and therefore therefore the temporariness is very clearly understood and uh, it's, we have to keep in mind that it is not a putting up with something like that. Oh, everything is temporary. What can we do? Okay, not that kind of a, not that kind of a thing. Everything is temporary, you know. When I tell the child, you know, balloon will break. What to do, you know? And the child has to say, Oh, yeah, okay. Tomorrow you get me a balloon, no? Yeah, I get you a balloon. Yeah. So pacified. No, this is not pacification. This is. This is knowledge. This is the power of knowledge. Thank you. Then you are. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, him, go ahead. Yeah, Jacobar, just to uh, slightly clarify. Uh, so, is it, can I define thought like this? Any, any motion that I perceive internally is thought. But not, not in the sense that I perceive, not, um, I mean, this, this statement itself is, is, I mean, language, it's a little hard to express, but uh, any perception of motion that was, that motion is thought. Can it, can it be put like that? Any perception of, of motion, motion of, of the mind? Of... It is a motion of the mind. Yeah, it's a perception of a vritti. Vritti is a change in the state of the mind. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually that is more accurate. Vrit Correct. So the mind, uh, there's a state of the mind and it changed. Something has happened. Right. The change now. And so you've heard a different sound. And so mm. that's it. The vritti has changed. Mm. And so that that's your thought. That's right. it. We just give a word thought for that. Vritti. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, uh, so, vritti, thought modification, in fact, uh, we use the word thought modification as a vritti <clears throat> because in order to recognize a thought, something has to change in the mind. Hmm. Suppose you have the same thought, tree thought, tree thought, tree thought, tree thought. Yeah. Okay. Tree, tree is there. And uh, you can't recognize anything else. Means it's a tree only. And tree thought is there. Okay, maybe you have a tree thought throughout. But a constant vritti is not possible, really speaking. Mm -hmm. Even the tree. Even the tree means you're constantly seeing the leaves sometimes, flowers sometimes, fruit sometimes. You're, there's so many things about the tree. This tree really is not one thought. Mm -hmm. There are many thoughts that combine. 
to give you the three three thought what you call you and i call a three thought mm. so that's why we use the word vritti so any modification mm. any modification whether we we may not even recognize that modification we may not call it and say my thought has changed it's all the tree you know i've been thinking of the tree all the time but still the vritti has been changing mm. all through right so when i say i see a tree by the time i say a i say that already i have referred to this entire body mind sense complex looking at um so it's like two three different motions in the mind have already happened by the time i say i see a tree right and you are saying that this reference that implicit reference to this body mind sense complex before i that reference is what is ahankara is it correct correct implicit you don't you don't make it explicit yeah uh, even though the word i is explicit uh-huh. i i did this when i say i am explicit about who did it but we don't say we don't think of the i as a thought correct, correct. because even to say i am that is i i am already using that i correct correct uh-huh. yeah 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 absolutely mm-hmm. So the I thought is that's why fundamental. Mm-hmm. To say I saw a tree, the I thought is already there. <clears throat> so we can't even say, does the tree? Suppose you ask the question. I ask you the question. Does the tree thought replace the I thought when you see the tree? No, it doesn't. It's always there. Yeah, it's always, not, there. always there. Correct. It's always implicit. but how can this dissolve this is this it can only be maybe recognized continuously or i don't, even i don't know how to how would this be recognized even because even that recognition invokes the i, I yeah so just like you said the i thought always is you recognize that the i thought always is it is something that never goes away except when you see except when you see, yeah okay that, that's a recognition Sorry. i thought only recognize this this ego which is asking all these questions only recognize this fact yeah same way it can be pushed even more and then made to recognize even more things right yeah so yeah. it's it's basically a purification of the i thought in a sense like it is confused in a certain sense confused in a certain sense the more you learn the more you learn the more you learn one second there's an echo there's an echo um so so in the sense that so, i thought can only change itself like the nature of um, how do i put this um, so instead of the i being entangled with a lot of uh, like it's just that over time it becomes clearer in the sense uh, it it is not entangled it has not mistaken itself to be what do you say um uh, so right now when i say i i am always almost always referring to either my body or my mind so over time uh, as this knowledge sinks in that 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 identity becomes looser and looser is that is that correct to say the identity correct with the body and the mind becomes looser and looser no doubt about that and uh, until a point where the identity itself is understood as mithya and i cannot be my identity look at that i cannot be my identity just like i cannot be my body body is i but i cannot be my body i cannot be my mind i cannot be any thought in my mind can i say that not right now yeah so so that's where we are heading mm. thought is i but i am not thought i mean of course if i reason in a certain way i can i can immediately say it but that's like it's like in a flash and then it goes yeah yeah so we'll get there we'll get there yeah good questions again dr ramesh go ahead and unmute yourself जय कुमार जी वेर 
discussing very complex uh, chapter address the i i mind body complex my question is in jagrata sapna sushupta three states what we have there where is i in sushupta mainly do we have i there do we or not sir do we have i there in sushupta yeah i there in deep sleep okay so so i'm hearing an echo are you all hearing an echo yes yes this is ramesh this is ramesh ji okay let me mute ramesh ji all right <clears throat> all right i muted you ramesh ji all right so does i exist in deep sleep okay now what what would be your guess ramesh ji go ahead and unmute yourself okay i'm sorry what was my question that was first question now my question is Next. what my question is what what would be your guess to the answer does i exist in deep sleep or not in deep sleep it does exist how do you know it exists how do you know it exists because even the deep sleep certain memories you can recollect you can come get back when you, um, in the deep sleep even though vividly we can recall that's one thing correct so correct. Correct. So, so I'm going to mute yourself. So there's no echo. So yeah, correct. So the fact that you wake up and say, "I had a good sleep," that's enough. That's enough to say I existed. If I did not exist, then there is discontinuity. You can't say. You can't say that uh, that you know you had a good sleep. You can't say that. Therefore, therefore, yeah, your point is also well taken. so you have to unmute yourself okay continuation of that is in case of patients with uh, anoxic encephalopathy encephalopathy means after a heart attack the brain deprive of oxygen creating the zombies okay they don't know anything what they are thinking and uh, like that the people with a stroke and they also there is no capability of doing right thing or wrong thing and during that that time those are those are the guys where is atma where is i in those guys all we are talking about the normal people right so i'm going to mute you again <clears throat> so for a question is in these kinds of patients who have uh, either had a heart attack and had some symptoms after that or stroke patients who may have lost their some of their mental faculties where where is atma and what how do you explain the presence of atma in such patients correct is that a correct question understanding yeah okay <clears throat> yes now see atma is uninvolved in any anything okay so because of atma's presence only the whole body the whole mind everything exists and operates or fails or operates in the malfunctions or operates inefficiently everything happens in the presence of atma 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 that consciousness is there now conscious atma doesn't decide how how a person should respond in certain situations atma doesn't decide how the brain works if atma decides how the brain works we have a problem because now there is ahankara then there is somebody who behind the ahankara who decides all these things no there is no such thing so atma is uninvolved 
And uh, so, th therefore, how our brain functions is anybody's guess. Is anybody's guess. Even among people who are there, different, all of us, brain works differently. Different levels of operation. Lungs, different levels of functions for different people. Then stroke, hemorrhage. Then certain processes that are there that medical people know exactly very well decides what the person's state of the brain is going to be and therefore the states of the person's mind, mental capacity is how it's going to be. Despite Atma being there, Atma doesn't run away any, anywhere because it can't run away. Okay. Therefore, Atma gives existence to everything you said. Proper functioning of the brain, brain deadness, everything, everything. Atma is uninvolved. Atma, the brain may be brain dead, but Atma is not dead. Uninvolved. It doesn't interfere in science. That is why Sanatana Dharma never was threatened by science. It was always happy by scientific inquiry. Because science, let be, science is, happens. That's part of the order. And Atma is, is outside the order. It's inside the order and outside the order also. It is unaffected by the order. Neither does it cause the order. Okay. So all these things is what we are learning in this Bhagavad Gita. So, so short answer to your question is you don't have to relay, uh, connect Atma to the, the symptoms that the patients are experiencing in certain situations. Atma always is. Atma is always there. And so it is important for those patients to recognize that Atma. That is why often this Bhagavad Gita becomes highly empowering to patients, you know, the, who are bedridden for some reason or the other. And they, they look at themselves now differently. Oh, I thought I am a mortal. No. Body is mortal. Correct. Nobody can change that. Even Krishna's body is a mortal. What to talk about my body? And so, body is mortal. Correct. But you are the observer of this body. You can't be, you can't equate yourself to the body. That's a big mistake. Drip Vrishya Viveka. So it becomes, it's not that difficult at all. It's not difficult at all. And so patients can easily see all these things. Especially when they are in the deathbed. They can see these things very clearly. When I explain properly. Do you agree with that Ramesh? Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. That explains a lot. There is an entity called conscious uh, sedation. Uh, conscious sedation during the anesthesia. Patient will be conscious. The brain cannot feel the pain. You can cut the brain. That's why one of the video you posted there, that lady, she kept on repeating Bhagavad Gita while getting the brain surgery. It can be done. I, it, it, some of the things it explains, Atma is completely is untouchable, undestroyable. It is there everywhere, all pervasive. Thank you. That was, uh, I was thinking about this one, how this function, nobody knows how everything automatically functions. Even with the brain dead guys, there's still other functions are functioning pretty good. That is supernatural power. Thank you. Yeah, it's 8.15 here, so we should uh, stop with this. <clears throat> Only want to mention, uh, my, my understanding, correct me if you want, at a later uh, stage, but I, uh, in the deep sleep state, because I is part of the uh, subtle body, so in the deep sleep state, it is basically the, uh, uh, it is in the seed form where everything else is absent, right? When we get up, uh, that is the time when I feel I am. So uh, the I, I, yeah, that is right that uh, the blankness is understood. When I get up, yes, I had a deep sleep. Uh, but it is not because of I, uh, that's my understanding. Uh, we can talk about next class. I mean, you can correct me if it is wrong. 
my understanding is that I only uh, comes up when I get up uh, into uh, uh, you know awakened state uh, because that's the time when I know that I am. Till that time, it is only just in the uh, seed form. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's in seed form. Fair enough. Karma Sharira, etc. So yeah. it becomes manifest and uh, the continuity is understood after waking up. So Jai Kumarji, when it, they're talking about I, I as Ahankara, the small I is not there, but I as the consciousness, I'm there in deep sleep. But is I is right? not equal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I is not I, consciousness, right? In that case, I yeah, is not the equal. I Ahankara, the small ego, the small self is not there because it's part of mind, and mind is not present at that time in deep sleep. Right. So the I that is present is I, the consciousness. The self-awareness, or what would we say? That is what is present, which makes you recall that you had a good sleep. Yeah, because I, that's right. But the earlier, my question was based on the small I, if it is referred to small I. Uh, that's what I was not, asking Kumarji yeah. also, like now when I said that, for clarification, because I, I kind of was going through the same thought process that you are going for, Sajji. So yeah. I just wanted the clarification is what we are thinking is correct or not. Yeah, yeah. So we say that uh, the Kartritam is not there. Karta also is not there in deep sleep. Okay. And then, so, but Karta is unmanifest. And then it becomes manifest when we wake up. Manifest. Unmanifest means, unmanifest means? Currently. Yeah, so I, I, in that particular form, it's not there. That is the meaning of unmanifest. And like seed, Saji mentioned seed form. The seed form, the entire tree is there in the seed. If somebody says it's hard to believe, how can the tree be there in the seed? Well, the tree is there in the seed. And uh, so like that, it works here. So when you said that I is present in deep sleep, you're talking about the consciousness there, right? The yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank Absolutely. You. Atma you. is present. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. We'll start with that. So we will learn. Uh, thinking, I want to also teach uh, this uh, this mantra from the Taitriya Brahmanam is there. Atrinatva Krime Hangi. So for this uh, Corona, uh, we can chant this uh, Vedic mantra also. So I'll do that. And even when we have time in the next class, I'll teach that for everybody. So we'll pass here today. Om, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dhanvantaraye Amrita Kalasahastaya Sarva Maya Vinashanaya Trilokyanathaya Shri Mahavishnave Namaha Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dhanvantaraye Amrita Kalasahastaya Sarva Maya Vinashanaya Trilokyanathaya Shri Mahavishnave Namaha Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dhanvantaraye Amrita Kalasahastaya Sarva Maya Vinashanaya Trilokyanathaya Shri Mahavishnave Namaha Thank you. Nice.